Hi, this video is going to cover solving equations and measurement problems. The learning goal for this video is to be able to determine the dimensions of 3D solids when volume or surface area is given. So we're going to be um, looking at problems where volume or surface area is provided to us and we're asked to find the missing dimension. So uh, radioactive waste from the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster is stored in cylindrical containers like the one you see here. If the volume of the cylinder is 88,000 cubic centimeters and the radius is 20 centimeters, determine the height. So volume is given to us, and here's the formula for volume um, for a cylinder. So just like what we've been all, always been doing with formulas, we're going to replace all the variables that we uh, can with values. So volume is 88,000. So I'm going to replace V with 88,000 okay, equals pi r is the radius in this case it's given to me as 20 so i'm going to write 20 there squared and then height i don't know so i'm going to write it as h so let's just figure out what 20 squared is first so that's um is 400 so we're going to rewrite this formula uh, this equation here 88,000 is equal to pi times 400 times h so now we're going to isolate h by uh, figuring a way to get rid of both the pi and the 400. So pi and 400 here are both multiplying with h. So we're going to do the opposite, which is divide. So we're going to divide both pi and 400 on both sides of the equation. Okay. Now again, remember the point of that is so that the pi's over here on the right can divide out and so can the 400s. So that's leaving me with h equals, and I'm going to figure that out. We're going to get 88,000 divided by, now it's um, pi times 400, but uh, we're going to need to group that in the denominator. Um, otherwise, we're going to get a, the wrong answer. So we're going to open up a bracket first, and then we're going to do pi times 400 and then we're going to close up the bracket. So that's what 400 times pi is. And then we're going to press enter or equals. So that's 70. So the height here is 70. Okay. So let's write something along those lines. So the height is 70 um, centimeters. Okay. So um, for today, uh, this um, volume formula, we're just going to use it a little bit differently. We're going to be given volume. So we're going to actually be able to replace V with a value. So let's do another example here. So a paper cup in the shape of a cone has a volume of 70.4 cubic centimeters and a height of 7 centimeters. Determine the radius of the paper cup. So there's the formula for the volume of a cone. We're going to be able to replace V here with the given volume, which is 70.4. And that's equal to pi times the radius. I'm just going to highlight it in blue here. That's the radius that I'm looking for squared times the height which is given to me as 7 centimeters, and then divide by 3, as the formula says. So we got to figure out um, a way to isolate r here. Um, so I'm going to deal with the uh, denominator here first. So remember, to get rid of any denominator, we're just going to multiply. So we're going to multiply by 3. And we're going to do that on both sides. So the threes here are going to divide out and I got to figure out what 3 times 70.4 is. So 3 times 70.4 is 211.2 and that's equal to, and we're going to write down what we have left here, pi r squared times, oops, I'll just keep it black, 7. So now we got to figure out a way to um, remove the pi and the 7 from this side of the equation. Well, pi and 7 are both divide, uh, sorry, multiplying with r, so we're going to divide pi and the 7 from the right and from the left side. So that way the pi's and the 7's over here divide away. And look, I've got r, I've got r squared, and over here I got to evaluate what that is. So 211.2 divided by, now I'm going to open up a bracket so that I can figure out what pi times 7 is, okay, together. Now I um, press uh, equals to divide, and that's 9.6.
All right, now here is r squared. But remember, I just want r, the radius. So the last step here is we need to take the square root. So I'm going to square root both sides here. So r is going to be equal to, I'm just going to take this value and square root it. So that's 3.099. Let's just round it to 3.1. So 3.1 uh, centimeters. So let's say the radius is 3.1 centimeters. Okay. So here um, we needed to remove the denominator through multiplication. And then also at the end, uh, we needed to take the square root because the variable was squared. All right, let's do a question uh, involving a square base pyramid. Um, so determine the length of the square base of the Great Pyramid of Giza if the height is 139 meters and the volume is 2,451,000 uh, cubic meters. So there's the volume formula. I'm going to replace V with the given volume, 241 million. And that's equal to the base, which I don't know, so I'm just going to leave it as b squared. The height is 139 divided by 3. All right, so we want to get rid of the 3 in the denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides by 3. That way those 3s will divide out. So let's figure out what 3 times that, 3 times 2, 4, 5, 1, Zero, 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 seven million three hundred fifty-three thousand. There we go, and that's equal to b squared times one hundred and thirty-nine. So now I've got to get rid of that one hundred and thirty-nine, and that is multiplying with b squared. So now I'm going to divide both sides then uh, by one hundred and thirty-nine. So you see, they will divide out, leaving me with b squared, and that's equal to that divided by 139, so that's 52,899.3. 899.3. Okay, now again, b is squared here, so I just want b, so I'm going to take the square root. And then b is going to be, I'm just going to square root that, 229.99, no, that's close enough to 230. So we'll just say 230. Okay. So um, the length of the square base, right? the length of the square base is 230 meters. All right, you're going to try a question now. So a ceremonial TP is in the shape of a cone and has a volume of 13.9 cubic meters. Determine or sorry, calculate the radius of the TP if its height is 4.1 meters. So there's the volume formula for a cone. Volume is given to you, and the height's given to you. You're asked to find the radius. So um, this is similar to the uh, example from before. Um, so pause the video, uh, give the question a shot, and when you're ready to check your answer, just press play. Good luck. All right, I'm going to take this up very quickly. So the volume was given to us as 13.9. And that's equal to pi r squared. The height given to me is 4.1. And then divide by 3. So when you got a 3 as a denominator, you want to get rid of it. And you're going to multiply it away. So those 3s will multiply out. So we've got to do 3 times 13.9. Oops. So 3 times 13.9. 41.7 is equal to pi r squared times 4.1. So now we want to get rid of both the pi and the 4.1. They're both uh, multiplicate, multiplying, <laughs> so we're going to divide them away. And we're going to do that to both sides. All right, so the pi's will divide out, and so will the 4.1's. So you see we're left with r squared. And we got to figure out what that is on the left-hand side. So 41.7 divided by, and then in brackets, pi times 4.1, and then close up the bracket, press equal. So that's 3.237, let's say. 3.237. 
All right, so that's the radius squared, but again, I just want the radius, so you need to square root it. So r is equal to, oops, we're going to square root that, so that's close enough to 1.8. I'll just say 1.8. Okay, so we'll just state the radius is 1.8 meters. All right, so let's um, switch gears and do some surface area questions, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, we just got to use different formulas, and then sometimes it's a tiny bit more complicated. So here's an example, uh, an open-topped ice cream cone with a surface area of 64 centimeters uh, squared and a radius of 1.7 centimeters is dipped in chocolate. Determine the slant height of the cone. We're going to use this formula. So it's just pi rs because it's just a lateral surface. It's an open-topped cone. So we're going to replace A with the given surface area. So instead of writing a, I'm going to write 64 equals uh, pi, the radius is 1.7, and then s is the slant height, which I'm trying to figure out, so I'm just going to write s. Here i got to um, divide out the pi and the 1.7, because they're both multiplying, right? So I'm going to divide by both pi and 1.7 on both sides. Okay, so. Again, now the pi's will divide out, the 1.7's will divide out. So I'm left with s, and we're going to figure out what 64 divided by pi times 1.7 is. So again, 64 divided by, and then bracket, pi times 1.7, close up the bracket, press enter. So that's 11.98, uh, let's just say 12. Okay, so for the slant height here, is 12 centimeters. All right, let's try another example. And th this one's a little bit harder because the, you see how the formula is a little bit more complicated. There's an, um, an addition term um, as well. So we're going to see how we deal with that. A uh, cylindrical rain barrel has a surface area of 5.65 meters squared and a radius of 0 0.5 meters. Determine the height of the rain barrel. So again, we're going to replace A with the given surface area. In this case, it's 5.65. We're going to make that equal to 2 times pi times the radius. So that's 0 0.5 squared plus uh, 2 pi times the radius, 0 0.5, and then times h, the height, which I'm trying to find out. So um, to make things a little bit easier, we're going to just uh, evaluate these expressions here so that we get some concrete numbers. That way we can deal with them a little bit easier. So we're going to write 5.65 here, and that's equal to, let's just figure out what 2 times pi times 0 0.5 squared is, right? So 2 times pi times 0 0.5 squared equals, so 1.57 plus, and then we'll do uh, 2 times pi times 0 0.5. So that actually just gives us pi, but we'll just write 3.14 to be consistent. And then h. All right, so you can see here we actually just have a two-step equation. Um, so remember, we're going to eliminate this 1.57 here first, and then we're going to get rid of the 3.14. So 1.57 is adding with h, so we're going to subtract it out. And we're going to do that on both sides. So 5.65 take away 1.57, that's 4.08. That's equal to, remember this is now subtracted out, so I have 3.14 times h. Because 3.14 is multiplying with h, remember now we just do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing, to undo that. So 3.14 and the 3.14 will divide out, so h is equal to, and then we're gonna, just going to figure out what that is, oops, 4.08 divided by 3.14, and that's 1.299, that's close enough to 1.3. So, the height of this thing is 1.3 meters. So, you're going to try this last question here. We're going to go back to the Great Pyramid of Giza, the surface area, including the square base, um, assuming that you can pick it up and the floor would go with it, would be 135,700 meters squared. 
So calculate the slant height of the pyramid. So there's the formula. There's some information here on the diagram as well as in the uh, written description at the top. So try the question out, uh, pause the video, and then when you're ready to check your work, um, press play. Good luck. All right, let's replace A with 135,700. That was the given surface area. And that's equal to two times the base, which is 230 times S plus 230 squared. So let's just uh, clean that up a little bit. We're going to um, uh, evaluate those expressions. So 135,700 is equal to, uh, that's going to be 460 S um, plus 230 squared. So let's figure out what that is. 230 squared, 52,900. All right. So this is just a two-step equation. So we're going to subtract 52,900 away right, on both sides. So let's figure out what that is. 135,700 take away 52,900. 82,800. Whoops, 82,800 equals 460 S. All right, so the last thing that we're going to do is divide 460 out because it's multiplying with S. So we're going to do the, we've got to undo it. So the 460s will divide out. So S is equal to 82,800, which is right here. Divide that by 460. So that's 180. Okay. So we can say the slant height is 180 meters. Okay. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope that's uh, made things a little bit more clear about uh, solving um, equations with measurement problems. Um, so best of luck.